good night and welcome back to the channel. Tonight I'm going to make the stars shine brighter. If the clouds let me. So, what's the plan tonight? Well, if you have ever made pictures of the stars, you have probably noticed that the star constellations don't really stand out. Oh, there's a spider. <laughs> okay, creepy. <laughs> so, what are we doing tonight? Well, have you ever made pictures of the stars and noticed that the star constellations, you know, the really brighter stars, don't really stand out in your final photograph? You know, they all seem to be equal, equally as large and equally as bright. Well, I have noticed it and, well, we're trying to fix that tonight. There seem to be filters on the market, uh, which are called uh, diffusion filters, sometimes also called mist filters, um, which should have the effect that um, they target only the brighter stars in the sky and they really make them bloom, you know, like there's a sort of glow around them. And tonight we're using a, a Koken filter for professional use, so that's good. Uh, it's the X840, and um, yeah, let's uh, test it and uh, see what it does. But first I had to wait for clear skies, which is often the case in astrophotography. So there's actually a small gap in the clouds, the Big Dipper. There's a major is uh, now pretty clearly visible. I'll take a couple of test exposures. I've already made one uh, without the filter. I'm now going uh, to do one with uh, the filter for the whole duration. And if that's too much, I'll also try uh, to hold the filter for half of the duration uh, in front of the lens. So let's see how that goes. Ooh, sweet. Nice, it really stands out. I see I'll also have to take really care with the reflections on this one, so I'm going to put you out. Also, I'll have to shield perhaps the red lights on my camera. All right, I'll take some more exposures. So it was clear for about 45 minutes. Um, I've shot uh, the Cassiopeia region and also Ursa Major. Um, it's not as easy as it seems to use the filter actually. It's really prone to uh, reflections of uh, cars driving by behind there and um, also uh, really small red lights on the camera. So I have to pay very special attention to that. And also while uh, yeah, shaking the filter a bit in front of the camera, um, it seems that I also uh, uh, nodded my camera a bit, so not all the shots are sharp, but I think I'll have enough um, to put something together and uh, see how the filter works. Now let's uh, look for some foregrounds to make the shots complete. But before I go hunting for foregrounds, let's take a closer look to the results the filter produced. Uh, you can see the results here of the uh, Cassiopeia region of the Milky Way and Ursa Major uh, without and with the filter. Let's open this one without the filter. Uh, and you can see the stars are pretty sharp here. Uh, this is the Cassiopeia region of the Milky Way, but the star constellations don't really stand out. Uh, if you look very closely, you can see Cassiopeia here, uh, the Andromeda galaxy here also. Uh, and if you uh, go down, you can see the Pleiades. Uh, it's pretty good, but I would like the stars, at least uh, the brightest stars, to stand out a little bit. And Let's skip to the one with the filter applied. Uh, you can see here that the stars really pop, you know, uh, they really stand out. Um, okay, so I actually like this one a bit more. Uh, if we zoom in, we can see here what the filter does. It um, yeah, creates a sort of glow effect around the, especially the brighter stars. And if we compare it uh, with the one uh, without the filter applied, uh, which is at the right, you can also see that the filter yeah, kind of blurs out the uh, smaller stars. So that's a, a little side effect. I'm not sure if I want that all of the time. Perhaps we can blend the two together later. I'll see. 
Um, what I also notice is if we look uh, at the edges of our frame it really exaggerates the prolongation of the stars. Uh, at the right it isn't yeah, really noticeable but uh, here at the left with the filter applied the stars are yeah, a bit prolonged but um, I think I don't really mind. Um, because uh, yeah, uh, the goal of the filter is to let the star constellations come out better in your photo and that is exactly what it does. Um, let's take a look at uh, the results for uh, Ursa Major and we see kind of the same here. Also the dust spots <laughs> of my camera very irritatingly uh, <laughs> in the middle of the frame. Uh, this one is uh, without the filter applied and here is the one with the filter applied. So yeah, the Ursa Major really stand out, uh, stands out and also the uh, brighter stars here at the top of the frame really stand out. What I also noticed is that the star colors actually look pretty good with the filter. So it uh, also seems to accentuate colors of your stars, which I think is always a good thing. Okay, so uh, let's go back into the field and check if we can make these uh, sky shots into some awesome compositions. So I've decided to make it uh, an easy foreground for the first one. And it's uh, me sitting on the bench there, looking into the Cassiopeia region. I've uh, spotted a tree just a bit uh, down the road. Let's see if we can uh, compose a tree for Ursa Major. So there's uh, two foregrounds done. I think we'll call it a night for now. Yeah, I think it was a good one. Uh, 45 minutes of uh, clear sky time. Enough to uh, put the filter to the test. And uh, yeah, the moon is uh, still out, which washes out uh, yeah, the smaller stars, but the constellations are uh, pretty visible still. So uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. See you on the next one. Mm -hmm.